The president has now made those phone calls to those families of the fallen in Niger. One of the troops killed in action was Sergeant LaDavid Johnson, whose widow spoke with the president by phone yesterday. She was in a car traveling to meet her husband's remains when the president called two weeks after her husband's death. She spoke to the president on speakerphone, surrounded by family and her congresswoman, Florida Democrat Frederica Wilson. And Congresswoman Wilson joins us now from Miami. She recounted that phone conversation to reporters yesterday, saying the president told the fallen soldier's widow that her husband, quote, knew what he signed up for, but I guess it still hurts. Congresswoman, thank you for being with us. If you could uh, just recap what exactly happened yesterday. You're, you're in the car um, with Ms. Johnson there. The president calls. It goes up on speakerphone. And what did you hear from the president? Well, exactly what you said, but that's not the worst part. She was crying the whole time, and when she hung up the phone, she looked at me and said, he didn't even remember his name. That's the, that's the hurting part. And, and so I think what's made some headlines is that the, the line that you recounted from the president saying that uh, Sergeant Johnson knew what he was getting into when he signed up. What was the tone and the tenor from the president in those particular comments? He was almost like joking. He said, well, I guess you knew he some, something to the fact that he knew what he was getting into when he signed up. But I guess it hurts anyway. You know, just matter of factly um, that this is what happens. Anyone who is signing up for military duty is signing up to die. And uh, that's the way we interpreted it. And, and it was horrible. It was insensitive. It was absolutely crazy and un unnecessary. Was, I was livid. Was that. Sergeant Johnson's widow's read of the call also, was she upset by it or are you speaking for yourself? She was in tears. She was in tears. And she said he didn't even remember his name. Uh, Catty. Congresswoman, it's, it's Catty Kay here. Obviously, we haven't heard uh, directly from Mrs. Johnson. She's going through an awful lot. This conversation has become intensely politicized. Uh, first from the president, but now do you think you have any qualms about, from your point of view as a Democratic Congresswoman, also politicizing this conversation? Is it right that you are speaking out about what was a conversation between Mrs. Johnson and the president? What I'm, what I'm really concerned about, and I wrote a letter to uh, General Mattis about the circumstances surrounding his death. I'm not trying to politicize what the president said. That letter went out long before the conversation. I have a real concern because I have been fighting Boko Haram for over three years in the Congress of the United States, ever since they kidnapped 274 schoolgirls from a private school in Nigeria. So Bring Back Our Girls is my project in the Congress of the United States. I've passed bills. I have been working with Nigeria. I've traveled to the region. And for uh, La David to be from Miami and a part of my mentoring program, the 5,000 Role Models of Excellence from a Little Boy, and to travel to the area where I have been fighting and to lose his life, why, my goodness, I was out of my mind. So I want answers surrounding his death. I want a complete investigation as to what happened to him. Why was he missing for 48 hours? Why was he in an unarmored car? Why didn't they have appropriate weapons? Boko Haram is the most dangerous terrorist group in the world. They burn babies and use little girls as suicide bombers. Congresswoman, that's, you're quite right. There needs to be an investigation to this, and there's been far too little coverage of this. And now the Pentagon is going to have an investigation into how um, those four soldiers died, and there should be more information. What I'm asking you specifically is, are you complicit in politicizing this conversation around the deaths of fallen soldiers. Someone asked me a question. Did you hear the call? Tell us what you heard. I told them what I heard. Yeah. Mark Halpern. That's not, that's not politicizing anything. That was my constituent. Yeah, Mark Halpern. I am, 
Con Congresswoman, thank mm -hmm. you for spending spending part of your time helping comfort this family that sacrificed for America. I'm wondering what you either knew before or have learned about about Sergeant Johnson that that you can share with people about what kind of person he was. Sergeant Johnson was wonderful. He was smart. He was athletic. He's married to the most wonderful woman who has two children and she is with child. They are devastated. He was raised by his lovely aunt and uncle. He has two younger brothers and they all came through the 5,000 Role Models of Excellence Project. <laughs> One of them is in college at Florida International University studying engineering. The other one is in the 5,000 Role Models of Excellence Fire College. He's going to be a firefighter. And we have started a scholarship fund for his children, for his two that are living, and for the one yet born. And already, we have reached $150,000 in one day. We're asking you to give. It's the David Johnson Scholarship Fund Go fun. And uh, he was just, just a wonderful young man. You know, in my line of work with a mentoring program, a dropout prevention program, an alternative program, I lose a lot of young black boys every year to crime in the street. But when a community like mine has a hero that we can lift up, and celebrate and love. That's all we care about. We're so proud of him and everything that he has accomplished. He died as a sergeant. He died as a hero. There are not many black Green Beret in the military. So we are so proud of him. And Mr. Trump was extremely insensitive. All to right. that family, and I will stick by that. I'm not trying to politicize it, but oh, I think it was a disgrace. We completely understand. It was a disgrace. Yeah. Completely understand. Congresswoman Frederica Wilson of Florida, thank you so much for your time this morning, for your support of Sergeant Johnson's family. And again, let's turn this into a positive. As you said, Maisha Johnson's going to need a lot of support. She has a six-year-old, two-year-old. She's six months pregnant with another child on the way. So that GoFundMe page again, LaDavid Johnson. Look it up and donate if you can. Congresswoman, thanks so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Mark Alperin, a lot to think about there. Uh, tell us, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, just to clarify something I said earlier, I, no one's challenging the account of the congresswoman and the other official who was in the car and, and, oh, and, and so grateful to them for helping the family. A point I was making before, and a caddy's question got at this, which is the president set this chain off in, in ways of criticizing President Obama falsely, et cetera, that, that are unfortunate. I think, I think the, the reality is we, we, this is still the commander in chief still calling families, and whether you think he did a good job or a bad job, hard to know based on, 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 on those accounts. They don't think he did a good job. But the important thing for the country is to not let this sacred act of the commander in chief calling these families become part of political fights. Mm -hmm. It just not, it just, it, it, it leads to a bad place. Peggy? Um, I agree. I, I guess we're going to spend some time now in the future going through this, this uh, very sad and unfortunate story about uh, the phone call in the car, et cetera. But, but boy, I'm struck by the life of Sergeant Johnson. What a young man. And, a and, great and young what a legacy guy. he leaves behind with his wife and children. I think we also should just look at that video one more time, if we still have it, of a, a widow now. Yes. Yeah. Bent over a flag grape casket, having to go to Miami International <sighs> Airport heartbreaking. to have her husband come home in a box. And she's got a six year old who reports said just stood there stoically. You can see her in the background there. Um, a two-year-old who was in the background being held by someone else, and her pregnant belly pressing up against the casket. Those are three children. And this is what families in America sacrifice. This is their, their husbands and wives and their dads and their moms go away for long periods of time. They go into harm's way. They don't know if they're going to come back. And sometimes when they do, it's like this. We'll be right back. 
Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.